what a what a what a week of college football we had all the insanity from Thursday night Friday and then Saturday running into you know that sweet sweet Pac-12 after dark you know I didn't I, I thought we were gonna avoid it you know all together for a little while but no that's not the case um what a week man what a week uh, if you watched UT Martin Missouri State on Thursday night during the beatdown of the Bills gave the Rams, the Bears, they outlast the Skyhawks in the playoff rematch from last season. And also in the FCS, four more FCS teams defeated FBS foes this week. Congrats to Eastern Kentucky, Holy Cross, Incarnate Word, and Weber State, who beat up on Utah State like it was nobody's misses. I am very surprised at how bad Utah State looks. Like, oh my god. What do you what do you mean? What do you mean what do you mean this team is like this? But we're not here to talk about the Mountain West. We're gonna be talking about another conference here tonight, maybe. We'll be talking about another conference here in just a moment. Let's get some of these other games out of the way first. Um, Devin Leary had six total touchdowns against Charleston Southern. NC State wins pretty big. C.J. Stroud had four TDs against Arkansas State. Trevion Henderson had two rushing. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. was the guy that stepped up. Uh, again, I said during the preview somebody was going to have to step up. And three of the four Stroud TDs were, were caught by him. So that's good. That's good on there. Southern Miss took on Miami. It was a slugfest at first, but then Miami, you know, took the ball away from Southern Miss three times and just overwhelmed them in the second half. Same thing with the Oklahoma-Kent State game. That game, you know, Dylan Gabriel had three touchdowns, but, I mean, OU struggled a bit at first. It was 7-3 to three at half. And I mean, it was just it, it, it then finally you know was able to be over after that. DJ Uilagale and a crew that, that crew out there in Clemson they went pretty comfortably over Furman. Furman did put up 12 points. They outgained Clemson too, but Furman put up 12 points. It's kind of concerning, you know, because you know you got Georgia shutting out Sanford. I mean, Stetson Bennett put up another 300 yards passing. Man's is. He's on a different level. You had Jalen Berger and Jarek Broussard for the Spartans just running all over Akron. And then that defense for Sparty. They shut out the zips. Crazy stuff. Central Arkansas took on Ole Miss. And unfortunately for the Bears of Central Arkansas, the Rebels forced four turnovers. And, you know, Jackson Dart, Lou Altmeyer, they both threw a couple touchdowns each. And poor Hawaii also. Uh, it does look like J.J. McCarthy will be the guy going forward. He was on fire tonight. He did everything that you could ask. And Kate McManera did not. So uh, it's, it's going to be something. And then you, then you got Utah putting up nine TDs on offense. Get Southern Utah. That's it's messed up. But it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Why don't we, you know, go on back up and talk about Saturday. The game on Saturday that, you know, um, a lot of people were hyping up, you know, that number one Alabama team coming in to Texas, coming to Austin to take on the Texas Longhorns in a big-time game that's been hyped up by, you know, Fox and ESPN and everybody, you know, that game in which Alabama was a 20-point favorite. Yeah, that game. I'm not entirely happy about this result. Um, you, you all should know by now that I'm a Texas fan. Not, I'm not entirely happy because we lost. The Horns did, in fact, lose this game. And, you know, there was a couple of bad ref ball plays in this game. You know, ref ball is the be-all, end-all. This is definitely the game where... You can use hashtag rap ball on this one. There were some shaky, shaky calls in this game that were missed. 
Alabama had like 15 penalties when they should have had like 20. I'm just being real. They missed the face mask. They missed, and they, they actually made up a call of targeting when the Texas defender was hit Bryce Young's legs. That's not the head or neck area. They made that up, completely messed it up. Now, the question that arose from that play, you know, not just the phantom targeting, did Bryce Young, you know, was Bryce Young down in the end zone, you know, constituting that as a safety? Did he do intentional grounding? And the answer to both of those, unfortunately, is no. Uh, I mean, I I, 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 I sat here and I was like, wait, there is actually a receiver in the area, unfortunately. Now, there is the whole thing with the cap situation, and it's just like, at this point, it's it's too late. It's too late. Nothing, nothing you could do there. Nothing. You know, Quinn Ewers, he did pretty good at the beginning of this game, but then he got knocked out. You know, clavicle injury. Not sure how long that clavicle injury will be. Hudson Card, he came in and played on a bum leg, and it just, it just did not. It, it was, it wasn't pretty out there. Both these quarterbacks for Texas. They, they, they couldn't do much. B. John Robinson, he did get a touchdown. He did, you know, catch a few big plays, you know, you know, when Texas was able to make plays. But unfortunately, Sark and crew, Steve Sarkeesian and company just missed the opportunities presented to them. It's just, it's just sad at this point. You know, the opportunities were there. And they were missed. That that's my takeaway from this. I know, I know some other people are gonna be like, "Well, no, you know, they're still gonna be whining about the, the the ref, you know, situation." But unfortunately, when you miss a field goal, when you, you know, that field goal is partially blocked, I think anyway. When you do not get touchdowns in the red zone, when you decide to try a pass on third and three with about a minute and a half to go instead of running for three straight yards because I mean B. John ran it for like he ran it like 20 times for like 70 yards so it's like three yards right there that's like three yards in cloud dust instead you let Will Anderson Jr. finally make a play because he was making mistakes all day he was making mistakes all day long and you let Bryce Young lead a couple of big TD drives. The, this is a shades of the Auburn game right there in which Bryce Young led these drives despite the fact that this old line looked absolutely, you know, despicably bad. Like, what is what happened to the Bama old line? This isn't the same Bama old line that's been dominant. What happened to this Bama defense? They're not playing discipline. I get it. The environment was loud, but you got to play with some discipline. And the wide receivers were dropping balls and everything like that. And it's just like, you know, come on. It is what it is. And, you know, at the end of the day, Bama escapes. I do not, I I think I've won on record and said that this is not the number one team in the country, you know, the past couple of weeks. And I'm going to say that again. Bama is not the number one team. It's Georgia that's the number one team in the country. You know, I, I could, you know, I was waiting for this type of game. You know, I genuinely thought, you know, unless it took an act from God, Bebo, you know, would beat Texas. Uh, I'm just being real. Texas, you know, they, they can hang their head for a little bit, but they got to, you know, get back on track. UTSA and the rest of the Big 12. Speaking of, why is Kansas 2-0? Why is Iowa State 2-0? You know. Okay, more, more so Kansas than Iowa State because, you know, I didn't talk about the Cyhawk Trophy at all in the preview, and I don't really I don't really want to talk about that game because, I mean, Iowa's offense is terrible. But um, Kansas is 2-0. West Virginia is in a downward spiral. And we'll talk about another Big 12 team later, or rather they'll, they'll actually be last to talk about 
then you had the other two games if you really wanted to watch those. But, I mean, those ended up not being as competitive as South Carolina took on Arkansas. Raheem Sanders, he ran all over the Cox. K.J. Jefferson was too much. And that Hogs defense, they forced three turnovers on Spencer Rattler and crew. You know, 44-30, that's, you know, that's not indicative of what actually happened out there. Because, I mean, South Carolina was getting pretty bullied out there. You know, you know what it is. Garbage time points and stuff like that. Sam Hartman came back for Wake Forest. Wake Forest has some big games coming up down the line. And, he, and I mean, Hartman lit up Bandy. Four TDs, 300 passing yards, exactly. Just absolutely wonderful stuff. And then, in the afternoon, Tennessee took on Pitt. And in this game, Hendon Hooker and the Vols defense, they snatched victory away from Pitt in overtime. We had a blocked punt. We had fumbles. We had Nick Patty coming in for Keaton Slovis because Keaton Slovis got injured with something. And Nick Patty also was injured. He was banged up too. And, I mean, both these teams were missing kicks and everything. You know, more so Pitt than anything else. At least Israel Abani Kanda, you know, ran all over the balls for 150 yards in the TD, but at least doesn't count in my book. And Pitt, you know, really should have won this game. But again, the defense for the balls, Hendon Hooker, you know, being, you know, that guy, they snatched away the balls that they snatched victory away from Pitt. Washington State took on Wisconsin in a game that was also supposed to have a very, very big spread. And instead, we had, you know, a couple of bizarre fumbles and everything like that. The Badgers were playing sloppy. And despite the fact that Wazoo was not very good on third downs and everything like that, again, both these teams had three turnovers, you know, and yet at the end of the day, Cam Ward, the transfer quarterback from Incarnate Word was able to put his name in the sketchbook and say, hey, I did it. I upset a top 25 team. Just like that. Amazing plays down the stretch by Camp Ward that cemented this victory for Washington State of Wisconsin. That's a, this is a huge, huge victory for the Cougars. And then you had Houston, Texas Tech. Houston had to go to OT again. You know, like, there were missed kicks in this game as well. But at least Donovan Smith was able to finally put Houston out of their misery at the end. They got the OT TD off of his run. And Texas Tech, they're in a good position now. And Houston falls from the ranks of the undefeated. Now, there, now, you're probably wondering, what do you mean there's a couple other games I need to talk about in this afternoon slate? Oh, you didn't know? The Sun Belt, yeah! 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 Oh, Notre Dame! Oh, Notre Dame! Oh, Notre Dame! How bad is this Notre Dame offense? It is awful. Henry Colby had a key touchdown drive he led in the fourth quarter, along with Stephen Gilmore's interception. That's right, Stephen, not Stephon. Stephen Gilmore's pick six that sealed the game. The game was won in the fourth. Marshall and Notre Dame were fighting, you know, for control throughout this game, and yet Notre Dame. Both their quarterbacks are not that great. Tyler Buchner, Buckner, whatever you want to call him. And um, um, the other quarterback, um, like Pine or whatever, they, they, they both threw th like three terrible interceptions in the fourth quarter. And, it, and that pick six was the clincher right there. Just, just terrible for a team that was top five preseason. And then you had Kalon Laybourne, you know, with a huge, 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 163-yard day and a TD as well. Like, you cannot have that. Notre Dame, again, the question coming in was, can Notre Dame find some offense? The answer to that is no. This team is probably going to drop out the top 25 for the time being, I think. Whew. 
It's disappointing. And then you had App State and Texas A&M chase Bryce, the Mountaineers run game, and that ball control philosophy that they employed today. That gave them the upset win over A&M. They couldn't get it last week over North Carolina, who somehow is 3-0. Don't question me on that. I don't know why North Carolina is 3-0, but they are. You know, this this is bad for A&M. Like, this is pure comedy at its finest because not only did A&M not have the ball for even 20 minutes of actual game time, only one person shined, and that was um, Devon Akne, you know, being the only highlight. You know, he had a kick return touchdown and a rushing touchdown. But if that kick return touchdown, you know, wasn't, you know, going to suffice, then what in the world was Hayes King going to do? Because he didn't do anything in this game. We're talking he didn't do nothing. Come on now, Jimbo. Jimbo. Y'all had this number one recruiting class, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely just absolutely smiling. I'm, I'm having a good time with this one, because watching the tail end of this game was just pure comedy in its purest form. Like, I'm already upset, you know, from the Texas loss, but A&M losing, that makes my day. A&M losing makes my day. Yeah. It'd be better if both Alabama and Texas A&M would lose, but hey, I can settle with A&M losing. I can settle with Notre Dame losing. I can also settle with Nebraska losing to Georgia Southern. So, you know, the Sun Belt sweep out here, baby. Talk about that Sun Belt sweep. Good stuff right there. Good stuff in the Sun Belt. Congratulations to all the teams in the Sun Belt that were able to, you know, make it happen today. You get what I mean. And then in the evening, you know, we had a we had a trio. Well, actually, we had four. You know, going to get to the nightcap, and I believe there's still a game going on right now. I know Oregon State, Fresno State was wild at the end, in which Fresno State, you know, lost the game on the Wildcat being implemented by Oregon State. But uh, Kentucky, Florida was the first of these. You know, the kickoff. Will Levis, he did all right out there. Um, Kavosley Smoke, he he was running down the Gators' throat. He, I mean, they wore down the Gators' D, you know, out there, and it was just it was just rough to watch at times. You know, Anthony Richardson, he didn't look that great out there. He threw two bad bad picks, including the pick six towards the end of the game that really clinched the game for Kentucky. Because I mean, the Gators they couldn't get anything going. In fact, they didn't even score in the second half. You know, maybe that was a one hit wonder. Florida. I, I genuinely don't know why, you know, the pollsters, you know, were able to, were just, were just like, ah, oh, we're gonna rank Florida so high, but you know, it is what it is, might as well drop them right back out of these polls, because I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I, don't, I don't see it right now. Arizona State took on Oklahoma State, and Spencer Sanders and Dominic Richardson, they, they put, they, they put the Sun Devils away real quick. Like, it was close for a hot minute. You know, the fight in Herm Edwards, they kept it close for a hot minute, but again, Arizona State was just no match for Oklahoma State. You know, the guys on the Cowboys team was just a little bit too much for them. That defense was just a little bit too much for Arizona State. And then you had USC Stanford. I'm a little bit concerned about the Trojans' defense. This is a Lincoln Riley staple. He gave up 444, you know, 441 yards. But at least the Trojans took the ball away from Cal four times. That That's the good part. But the bad part is they still gave up 441 yards, 28 points. Yeah, they put up 41. USC did. But I'm not. I'm still not sold on USC. I, I don't. Until somebody in the Pac-12 can actually prove it and stay proven, uh, I'm not sold. Hey, you know. Caleb Williams, he had four TDs. Jordan Addison caught two of them. And Travis Dye had a TD while running for over 100. And, you know, this is a star-studded USC offense. But that's defense, though. They got to get it together. They got to get it together real quick. And then the game that, you know, ended about 20 to 30 minutes ago. You know, actually about 20 or so minutes ago because I'm still recording, you know, at this point. 
Baylor BYU, honestly, my pick for the game of the week, and what a game this was. This game went on for four hours. We had four missed field goals, two by each team, and, you know, we had the Bears running it all over BYU. They ran it over 50 times in this game. Blake Shapin didn't do too much. He did some damage, but when when it counted, when the plays counted, when the big plays counted, you know, especially the final play of the game, it just didn't work out. Like, you know, BYU, they they they, they made it happen. Jared Hall, Chase Roberts, you know, BYU had a couple receivers out, um, Cal and Gunnar Romney. You know, both of those guys were out, and yet the Cougars, they, they were able to maintain something in the end. They were able to maintain something. They maintained their sanity and kept this game going because if I hear the full moon line uttered from somebody's mouth one more time, I'm going to go insane. But in any case, BYU beat Baylor. That's another top 10 team falling down in, you know, absolutely terrible fashion. So, you know, could have had the number one team fall too, but, you know, it is what it is. We knew what we were in for when we had, you know, Alabama, Texas go down to the complete wire. I don't know what the AP top 25 is going to look like tomorrow with the coaches or anything like that. It's going to be wild because, I mean, you know, Remember when, you know, game day was supposed to come to A&L, but then, you know, not only did App State take their, that money that A&L, you know, gave them, they got the W and they got game day. So I don't know what in the world's going to happen next week. You know, it, 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 there's some sprinkles of good stuff in there. There's some sprinkles in there. But I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'll, you know, gonna watch all of it. It's college football, though. So I'm probably going to be watching every single minute of it. And until, you know, Monday night when we talk, you know, the NFL, because, oh, God, we got to talk about that Bills-Rams game and whatever is going to happen, you know, in the next uh, in the next 10 hours or so. Whatever happens in the next 10 hours, go and get the Monday night, you know, you know, talk about Sunday, go and get the Monday night, with that Monday night game. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, man. It's going to be crazy. But what did y'all think about week number two of the college football season? How y'all feeling about the Sun Belt, though? Because, I mean, the Sun Belt, good stuff right there. And it's it's going to it's gonna be hard for some of these teams, you know, down the line. We're looking at a crazy season again, aren't we? We're looking at a crazy one. I don't know what's going to happen next week. I cannot wait. I'll see you all tomorrow.